Uh, right. TNA. Right. Yeah. Right. TNA. Uh, T- uh yeah, we're fucking, uh, fucking week, pay-per-view number ten. Yay. Week week ten of what, what what was it again? TNA. NWA TNA. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, week ten of T. Wait, what? What? Whoa, 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 what? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. What was that? That was the, that was the horn. Horn? The lucha horn. <laughs> are you We're free. That we are... We're free. We're free. We're, We're free. free. <laughs> We're free. We, we've escaped to TNA. Wait, what? The fuck was that? <laughs> oh, are you telling me that we're doing the temple run? Oh, my God. We're doing the temple run. Yes. <laughs> We are doing the temple run, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, yeah, the last two pay-per-views of TNA were so bad that I was like, actually, fuck wanna... this. Actually, <laughs> fuck this. <laughs> so, we are doing Lucha Underground, which is currently free on Tubi. Uh, yeah. they released we've, been in, like a... we've been encountering... Well, I've been encountering financial issues, but outside of that, we've been encountering... It seems like people are hoarding their exclusive rights to playing videos like a dragon. Yeah. And apparently it's not okay for people to have places to watch things <laughs> they want to watch. So Right. So because, Tubi, we appreciate you. Yeah. Fucking bring it bring it Tubi. And uh, so, yeah, so, we are so celebrating a- the uh return of Azteca Underground with yes. the OG El Jefe. Name changed, but whatever. Name changed. Uh, <laughs> we're probably going to call him Dario Cueto anyway. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to call him Dario Cueto anyway. Man, it's kind of a soft reboot with MLW. I assume they're not going to be able to get a lot of the people back because, well, we'll get to it. But Oh, I mean, one, one of them died recently, so... Yeah, they're not getting that guy. <laughs> yeah, he got eaten by zombies. Oh, yeah, he did. Holy <laughs> Yeah, exactly. That's what I meant. <laughs> oh, I thought you. I thought you were making like a. Uh, no, I was not making a a fucking. Uh, God, I can't even remember his name, and I know who you're talking about. No, I wasn't making a horrible, tasteless joke about that. No. Okay. Uh, Lucha Underground is an hourly series that started in 2014 on El Rey, which is the sort of, uh, which is sort of the vehicle for. Uh, it was Robert Rodriguez's It's network. pretty much the vehicle for Robert Rodriguez to make a network where he could put whatever the fuck he wants on it. He had red <laughs> versus blue on there. Like, classic red versus blue. Exactly. Whatever the fuck he wants on it. <laughs> like, it's my channel. We're putting red versus channel. blue, and we're putting Lucha on it. <laughs> and there's going to be Danny Trejo. And Danny Trejo's going to be Trejo. there, and he's gonna, we're going to give him a corn dog, and he's going to be happy. <laughs> I, the moment's passed, but I do want to note, your feelings towards TNA basically became this. Hey, I just had an interesting thought. Yeah, actually, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Justin McElroy. So All we're right. kind of in a... We're taken to a very dingy... Very dingy fucking, like, warehouse. <laughs> Where just... There's a fight happening. There's yes. just a bunch of people fighting. It's really well choreographed and shit. Yeah, they and they have not, they have this thing called a camera. <laughs> they have this thing called a cameraman and a director. Yeah, I've never heard of those. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's a guy who can like point a point it point the camera at people, and when they point the camera at people, things happen. And then the director, he he picks things that happen. Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> He says, you're going to do this, and that the thing gets done. And then somebody edits these shots into, like, the best, like, looking way. I didn't know there was a thing called an editor. (laughs) Crazy, right? Uh, (laughs) uh, I don't know who the hooded figure was. He was wearing a mask. He got into a fight. Um, They don't really even, like, come back to this. They say who it is. I feel like they imply something, but based on how this scene goes... We, we go this to uh, Boyle Heights in LA with a random reggaeton band playing. Yeah, there's a lot. Like we start off with a bunch of like various hype packages of showing like Dario Cueto at like a triple A event. Yeah, they, he was like, at a triple A. Buy your luchadors. I bought your lucha. 
I have the joke because. Because like the the dude in the bug in the back alley brawl gets like met up with this guy in like uh like in a lucha mask. You this paid way more attention like, to the back alley brawl than I did. I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> well, that guy. Well, he ended it with "Come with me," and I put down the note "Come with me if you want to lucha." <laughs> Come with but me yes. if you want to libre. Uh. <laughs> but yes, there's a bunch of uh. Just a bunch of like stuff to build up, like oh yeah, Lucha Underground. The Lucha Underground is coming, and then we get into like the we enter the temple. Well, I mean, he, he Dario Dario christens it as the temple, and he's like, "I am Dario Cueto. I am an actor. No, <laughs> this is my temple where we. I am a businessman. <laughs> it's a temple where we honor the ancient traditions, courage, honor, and Eating his personal sh- favorite." Violence. Be- beat the shit out of each other. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. everyone's like, woo, violence. <laughs> we got Matt Stryker and Vampiro on the commentary team, including oh, yeah. what I would like to call the kind of blurry Matt Stryker cam. <laughs> the Matt Stryker pen cam, as I called it, because every time it was cut to him, he's going he for was pen. Like he's, his pen. He's wiggling his pen. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, the camera's kind of smudged. <laughs> Yeah, and, it's and they turn the Vampiro. They, the show. they turn Vampira up too loud, and you can hear his wet mouth. <laughs> Vampiro. Uh. Mm. So uh, we introduce it with a. Uh, so there isn't a championship yet, but they did there say that like the winner gets a hundred grand, or like the best lucha the man. Per- yeah, the 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 luchador who puts on the best performance will get a hundred thousand dollars cash from Dario Cueto, which is totally legit. So uh, the ring, it, it's interesting. They wanted to go for the, like the grungy underground fighting or re, fighting league kind of vibe, yeah, and so the they, the ring mat is grungy, but it's like a fake grunge, <laughs> and you notice it's they a did fake it grunge up with, like some paint, yeah. As soon as, like, they head outside and do any back bumps, they're just covered in dirt. <laughs> just covered in actual dirt. And it's, it is actually kind of gross. Because we got why Chavo, is the, why is the Chavo Guerrero versus Blue Demo Jr. Blue Demo Jr. Really, this is just a good match to start off the show for, like, a lot of newcomers. Like, you got two kind of, like iconic wrestlers veterans of like known families of luchadors yes more casual fans would be like familiar with chavo because oh it's eddie's, it's eddie's cousin and it's eddie's nephew yeah or yeah eddie's nephew uh it's crazy to think with like there probably wasn't that big of an age gap between them but like that's his nephew yeah i think he's about two or three years younger than uh eddie yeah his hairline doesn't show it but yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, this, this was a decent. Song. This was a decent match. Uh, Chavo taps out to like sort of like a, I, I would call it like a lasso from El Paso, but with like an arm wrench thing, and it's apparently yeah. one of Blue Demon Junior's like moves. It's like it's almost like a sharpshooter. Kind yeah. Of. Uh, by the way, this was Mega Fighter's idea. No. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, we should probably introduce ourselves if this is your first time watching us that's ali i'm mega fighter yes i know we're so great at introducing ourselves we are like oh for 25 at this point yeah we we we, we fail to introduce ourselves every time <laughs> it's a scorpion death lock okay okay with the arm thing yeah the arm thing yeah i think sting does the arm thing dario talks to conan who just says he's here for the money but he found, like, a really good fighter from, like, straight here. He's from Boyle Heights. Yeah. And he's here this is, this, this, to this, fight... This segment... Go ahead. And he's here to fight Johnny Lucha Underground. <laughs> Johnny Underground. Johnny Underground. Well, his name is Johnny Mundo, but yes, this is the continuing joke of the fact that uh, John Hennigan, or as you know him currently, John Morrison, or as you currently know him... Johnny Dead. zombie meat. <laughs> Johnny Johnny digested. <laughs> uh, has gone through like so many name changes you know, over the years. I, 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 usually through different companies. Dirt sheets say that Miz is injured, but Morrison came back. But I'm just gonna say they're both dead because that's more interesting to me. <laughs> they're both dead. Look, look, look. Taya Valkyrie, Frankie Monet, however, whatever her name is. 
confirmed it on Twitter. Yeah, he's dead. That, <laughs> that he's dead. <laughs> and that's his that's his fiance, wife. That's his I, I think that's his fiance. Yeah. I think they're engaged but not married. But still, if if his fiance is willing to say, no, he's dead. Oh no, wait, they're married. They were married in 28. So oh, yeah, okay. that's his wife. If his wife says he's dead to zombies, he's, he's dead, dead to zombies. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I really do like these this segment in Dario's office. You can really feel the Robert Rodriguez influence. They, they talk not... a little bit about lucha history, and I don't know if it's lore or like somewhat based in truth, but I do like the fact that putting on the mask was pretty much the way to not decapitate people for losing. Because it used to be that fucking fighters, like, you know, Aztec gladiators of, of yore would would decapitate their fallen opponents. It's like, you know, and that evolving into the mask is a is a pretty cool idea. Yes. Oh, God. What? Yeah, I, I remember, because this was also a hype package, because they were talking about how he was part of the fiercest... He was, he, like, the, Conan's... Uh, Conan's he was um, part of the... He, his family name is part of one of the fiercest tribes in, in fiercest the Aztec, renegade Aztec tribe. lore. To be decided. <laughs> to it's be... like, yeah, it was like the Jaguar tribe or something. It's like his spirit animal is, you guessed it, Frank, Frank Stallone. Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they're really hyping up Prince Puma. Like yes. I said, it, I really like just the scene with Dario and Conan in the office because it feels like you're watching a scene out of a Rodriguez movie. Yes. Like just like I go like Conan taking like a drink out of like Dario's whiskey jar or whatever it is, is it was a really nice touch. Free whiskey, free whiskey for Conan. Yes. And then we get our uh, after the hype package, we get our next match: Son of Havoc versus Sexy Star. Yes, Son of Havoc is in the ring, and he's just like, "All right, which one of you assholes is challenging me?" And now, and now we go to the reoccurring segment. Yeah, of Lucha Underground reviews or the Temple Run arc or whatever the fuck you want to call it, because you you fucked me over and now I can't do my what moves does Jarrett do segment. We we must now consult El Google. <laughs> so El Google, <laughs> son of havoc is Matt Cross. He's from um, he's from a couple companies. He was in uh, Wrestling Society X. He was in uh, CZW and Ring of Honor were the main ones. He was he's basically a regular of the independent circuit. He was on the fifth season of WWE's Tough Enough. And uh, if we go back to El Google for Sexy Star, she's terrible. Uh, so she's <laughs> terrible. She uh, she shoot injured Rosemary, and we stand Rosemary. So fuck her. Yes, yes. In a in a match for. I want to say Triple A. It might have just been Shimmer. She controversially like she got Rosemary in a in a worked uh, armbar, but eventually wrenched it. It was during Triple Mania twenty five. She legitimately injured Rosemary during the match, yes. like re- like wrenched really hard and hurt her shoulder. And we are big fans of Rosemary here. We love her. She's great. They're great. I should know if I if I if we're keyword kayfabe, they're great because you know Rosemary demon possession thing. Um, yeah, a, a pitched down Matt Cross is like I'm not wrestling a woman. What I like about this is that he doesn't go like full on stay in the kitchen. He just tells her just get you know, step out of the ring, get counted out, live to fight another day. But I'm not wrestling you. So she like ignores that. him, and then they wrestle, and Son of Havoc wins after, I don't know, it's sort of like a showcase a little bit of, like, what they can both do. And Pulls on the tights. Yeah. I do like that, like, she first acts like she's getting out of the ring, and then she just kind of rolls back in and starts attacking him, and then the match starts. Yes. <clears throat> then we, then get, we, get, back then we get, like, a tired Chavo getting harassed by Dark for losing and not getting the money, because... Yeah. Only winners get the money in Lucha Underground, you little coward. What would you? And also, I like brought, I brought Blue Demon here. Like, oh wait, no, he didn't bring Blue Demon to have an example made of it. But he was thinking like he wanted Chavo to beat Blue Demon Junior, and now yes. he's got to get another guy to do it. 
And yes, a thousand deaths is coming. A thousand deaths may be coming for us all. And then we get our main event. We're just right in there. Yep. We are right in there with Johnny Mundo versus Prince Puma with Conan on at his in his corner. Yep. Where, uh, we got Johnny Mundo and Prince Puma. Ah! El Google. El Google. Again. El Google so says that, that Prince Puma is Ricochet. Not yes, the one from Mucha Lucha, the, the, uh, the actual Ricochet. Uh, no, this... Uh, he is not from the... Uh, oh, God, I'm going to... I'm going to have to look this one joke up. The Hold foremost on. world-renowned international school of Lucha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you even, for remembering I didn't even this. need to look that up. All right. <laughs> Thank you. I, was I think there was remember. an extra, like, qualifier, but I don't remember it. No, it was the foremost world-renowned international school of Lucha. You were correct. Yes. I would have turned the echo oh. on, but that fucks with my audio settings, and I don't want to do it right now. Yeah. So, yes, if you've seen uh, Ricochet in WWE, he pretty much made, a, like, big waves here in Lucha Underground before getting signed. He got hired because he worked here. And because he doesn't work here anymore, now he just wears jeans and does nothing on main event yeah. and 205 Live. <laughs> now, that's not to say that he didn't have a career before Luch Underground. No. He was, you know, mostly known for PWG. He worked in Dragon Gate and Dragon Gate USA. He did some work in Jakara. Yes. So he's a fairly solid, like, veteran of the indie scene. So he was a good pick. So he's a good pickup for this show. Uh, this match was really good, and we had a lot of trouble, like, describing anything bad about it. Uh, we really did. It's just, it's just good, exciting lucha action. Just everybody, like, Matt it's Stryker, not just a bunch Matt of Matt Stryker it's, talks about how these two fuck. <laughs> yes. The, he's talking about how they can go the distance. Like, you, like these two guys can really go for a long time. These they guys can fuck. Distance. These guys. But yes, we, we being jackasses is translated to... These guys fuck. <laughs> he fucks with the mask on. <laughs> uh, Matt Stryker does recommend El Google. El Google. Of course, because he cannot he summon. Like, he cannot summon El Google because that's our bit. And also, he didn't. Bit. Also, he didn't say what someone else was in a different company. That's what El yes. Google's for. <laughs> oh, hey, Roxanne, you've joined us. Just uh, we're just on Prince Puma versus Johnny Mundo. What the fuck are uh, you doing here? <laughs> uh, I, yeah, I know. I, I thought we fired you. Late. Yeah, you always come late. Well, I didn't even know you were going to do the show today. A Google. A Google. <laughs> uh. All right. Anything you want to say about Johnny Mundo versus Prince Puma? Well, um, what I'll say is when I first watched uh, Lucha Underground, I had no idea that Puma was Ricochet, so I only know him, knew him by his the name that he the that he used in Lucha Underground. Yes. Ah, so somebody who did not use El Google. Yes, we have to use El Google if we found someone who now works as a different name. <laughs> I love the moment on commentary where Matt encouraged the fans to go out on their internet and look up and learn about wrestling stuff. El Google. Yes. El Google. <laughs> and Watching the match, I, I, I feel like it's such a shame what, they, what they've what done with Ricochet and WWE. They really don't let him do his thing there. I okay. mean, they, 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 they had John Morrison get eaten by zombies, so I feel yes. like Ricochet's doing better in that regard. But just in general, I mean, like... Oh, yeah. I they, think they're, all right, I, all right they, Ricochet, we hired you. We're going to give you a fancy entrance, and then you're going to lose to Braun Strowman every week. It's oh yeah, they just, do. They do ricochet dirty on WWE. It's not just that. Um, as I remember, you told me, Ali. They like, or I, I swear, I've heard it somewhere, where they are so strict with how you wrestle because you have to learn how to like, uh, make sure you're facing the hard cam at at, at certain times and stuff like that. So so the cam for. Like they're so specific instead, about instead of just instead of just where where you're like, supposed to be in the ring at, at times, just so they can have their cameras. Yeah, well, Rock Tan angles. Lucha Underground doesn't even have a hard cam. They have several cameramen in various spots, and they can move. 
and they can move to where the action is, which sort of, yeah. like, pivots into the fact that there's actual, like, camera work in the match where, like, the cameramen try to stay out of each other's way, and, like, they'll change angles so you get a better shot of them doing a move, and they won't fucking cut or zoom or anything. They got that fucking spinning camera that's, like, facing down onto the mat from the from the ceiling. They got yeah. the Matt Striker pen cam. They got the Matt Striker pen cam, which is the so, best. Allie, what you're saying here is, Allie, what you're saying here is, is that Kevin Dunn is a shitty fucking producer. Well, I, I'm not saying... No, I'm hypothetically not saying that Kevin Dunn only has a job because he's so good at kissing ass. What I am saying is Lucha Underground has cameras. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, it is, it is tough when you are in a position of everything is working because it's like, when shit well, works. They like say it is, in a movie, a... they say in a movie that the best camera work is when you don't notice it at all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think also in general, like they kind of restrict people's styles. They you you have to change it to match theirs. Yeah, so, and here he's just free to let loose, and it shows. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Flanish, and, uh, Johnny hits Flanish by hits like a moonlight drive. I love go- the moonlight drive, by the way. Oh, the uh, moonlight drive is really good. He wins off an end of the world that like he hits him with his arm. <laughs> <laughs> and kind of grazes him with his arm. The the Starship Pain slash End of the World has always been a very dodgy move. Just switch it to, like, the RVD split-legged moonsault. It'd probably be easier. Or go with, like, the Moonlight Drive as a finisher. Or the C4. You know, you got way more exciting, cool-looking moves Well, the C4 do. is a little limited. It's whoever can do a backflip or a front flip, yeah. pretty much. That's who can... Which, which when you're working in a Lucha the- company, is a lot of people. Oh yeah, a ton of people can do a ton of people can do a front flip, but like Braun Strowman couldn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be amazing if that happened. Oh god, if Braun could do a front flip, I would be marking out for him forever. Lucha Braun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although the start L train is, is a cool L-train. name for the finisher. I think the end of the world is better. Oh. It just sounds cooler. It's not it's a great name. Yeah. I just we started making jokes about John Morrison because we couldn't think of anything else to talk about, and I came up with the joke of he just like changes his name to whatever building he's currently in. So if he goes to the store, he's Johnny Kroger. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, if he goes to Burger King, he's Johnny King. Johnny King. What was that one we came up with? <laughs> oh God, I can't remember now. <laughs> You know what we, you know what we, oh, Johnny, Johnny Bedbath. Johnny Johnny Bedbath. Johnny (laughs) Bedbath. I I don't know why, but I feel like it was. Oh, and John, and Johnny Body Works. And Johnny Body Works, yeah. I don't know why, but I feel like for some reason it might actually fit a Lucha Underground. Is whenever he does a, the end of the world and hits it, they they cut to, they cut to like a asteroid hurtling towards Earth or something. I don't know. No, they just crack the world in half with like a Photoshop of just like <laughs> like they open MS Paint and just goes. Ah <laughs> oh, man. No, no, they play. No, they play that the smoke fatality from fucking Mortal Kombat Three. Yeah. <laughs> no, they do the fucking. Either that, or they just have to play the entire nuke scene from Terminator Two. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> I I found it strange that uh, at one point that you saw that they were fighting over in in part of the arena and then had no berries in front of the audience that they, they no the audience was just sitting there <laughs> like they're just sitting there yeah and I was like they could just wander to the ring and nothing is really stopping them decorum they <laughs> do they do they just really trust their audience I don't know and at the same time though. I mean, the show is taped, so if something were to happen, they could just easily cut it and edit it out. And there's this weird moment where, like, Johnny wins, and then he kind of checks on Prince Puma, and they hug. Then Dario comes out, and then Dario comes out and opens the briefcase, but when Johnny goes to get it, he starts, like, comically backing away. (laughs) And it comes with the briefcase, and he's like, no, you can't have the money now. (laughs) No, 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 no. And then... 
Johnny Mundo gets fucking jumped by like three dudes. Well, it's three two dudes d- at the start. Two dudes and then the third dude. The third dude comes out and calls him a Nagi, which is the worst yeah. thing to be called. Ah, uh, he's a Nagi. There now. are no it's other worse. words worse than being called a Nagi. And you I'm don't not going to be called a Nagi. And I'm not going to say them. <laughs> Cuz Oh no, I, not that one. Oh no, not that one. <laughs> That's not as bad as being called a Nagi though. Yeah. Like like that one comedian you like said, the word that you can say is the bad word, right? The word you can't say is the worst word. No, that's John the, Mulaney. No. <laughs> then he could have just called him a... No. <laughs> could have called him a Nagi, yeah. <laughs> God, God, I imagine people are very confused by this joke. So, if you don't know... um. The, There's a the the, the, the kind of the kind of lifting side slam like kind of like the rock bottom, but a standing rock bottom. The, it's called the Uranagi, and, and we always we always say calls him a nagi <laughs> because of like phonetics. It's Uranagi. <laughs> oh, okay. We're dorks. But yeah, that settles episode one. But. Because I they're so like short, we we're, not, two- we we're not told. Usually, when like a, an attack happens, at least usually in WWE, they right away tell you who would who they cue who the is. they cue the music. Oh yeah, they don't even say the names of who comes out. No, they, they don't. A, they don't say who anyone is. It's just two Latinos and a big black guy. <laughs> and they then do he, say Matt Stryker does say that's a familiar face. So that's a familiar like, face. Like ooh. wink, I, wink, I, wink. I like- <laughs> I like it because it's like a, it's like a, it's kind of a, like a marketing tactic. Save the reveal for next week and send no, that's to that's to that's some comeback next week shit. That's fine. That's it's, it's a like, weekly who, television who's series. Those guys? It's a weekly television series. You'll have to introduce something to make people come back. Yeah, I did. I did also like how the two smaller guys basically did the shatter machine to Mundo. Hell yeah. So those two, those three gentlemen, they work for me. <laughs> yeah, Dario Quinto just basically hands the briefcase to the to the big dude, to the yeah. black dude. We'll, we'll, we'll introduce him properly when well, we talk about the next we introdu- episode. When we, intru- when we introduce him, when we introduce him, we'll we'll consult El Google. <laughs> yes, El Google. You know what I like about Dario is he could have just been any other typical evil authority figure that we've seen many times. Yet he comes across as this like shady businessman making deals to get what he wants. Yeah, it's not yeah. that he's corrupt in the sense of like, you know, he's a businessman and he's doing what's best for business. No, he's doing what's best for him. He doing what he yeah. wants. He's looking out for himself and that's about it. And yeah. if things don't work out, it's like he already has a fallback, or do he just comes up with a new scheme? Yeah. And then for a comparison, Vince is a businessman, and like Vince McMahon is a businessman. Real, business well, like uh, real for life. example, I don't have the full context for the Attitude Era feud with McMahon, but I think it was pretty much Stone Cold wasn't the champion he thought was best for the company. Yeah, and also is. Like, I never really saw him as a businessman in character because he was more like the app, that asshole boss you have to deal with at work who hates you. Just he, because he, he hates you and thinks you're stinky. And you feel like he's doing <laughs> you're a, everything you're a, that you're a, he can. You're a leftover from the, from the previous management and they're trying to drum you out. <laughs> Just like me. You, yeah, you feel like he's doing everything just to screw you over specifically. Yeah. yeah. His whole, the whole story was he wanted a corporate champion and he wanted, and when Stone Cold won the belt, he wanted to turn him into a corporate, like a corporate lackey. And basically Stone Cold said, you You better wash up. (laughs) That's the bottom line. Now wash your taint. (laughs) I appreciate hell. You can kiss my ass. You better use Tide Cold Cleaning. Stone Cold wants you to make sure you're saving on energy and making sure you're using the cold wash. Ice tea's here too. <laughs> ice tea's here too. Why not ice cube? Cu- Why not ice cube? <laughs> oh, there's one thing that bu- that bugged me about ice that little- cube. 
Look, you can have a warm iced tea. That's just an iced tea that you left out too long. You can't have a cold ice cube because it's water. Or a warm ice cube. There's you, a couple things. You can't have a warm me. ice cube because it's water. Sorry. <laughs> There's a couple things that bug me about Prince Puma's hype package when they said uh, when Kona said his spirit animal was the jaguar, and I'm like, Jaguar. But his, but his name is the Puma. Why that is that is our and Pumas are incorrect. In fact, pumas are mountain lions. Yeah, but yeah, I know. But and it's yeah, and jaguars are completely different. Also incorrect. He did not say that that Prince Puma's spirit animal is the jaguar. He said that the spirit animal is you guessed it, Frank Stallone. <laughs> <laughs> Frank. And then he... If Prince Puma came out with a mask that was just like he got a print of Frank Stallone's face on his face. <laughs> Like a fucking head sculpt, like it's fucking the like Michael it's a, Myers it's a, head, it's a head sculpt, like it's like when you imported your face into a wrestling game, and it just looks like they're. It's it looks less like they're a person and more they're wearing face paint of the well, person thinking, they're supposed to be. Well, I was thinking like the Michael Myers, uh, fucking William I'm Shatner thinking, mask. I'm thinking less. William Shatner mask and more Dennis Farina from the fucking Monster Factory episode, <laughs> or, the, or, the or the or the or Lex Luger and um, what was it? Uh, fucking NWO Revenge, WCW NWO Revenge, <laughs> or Billy Gunn in No Mercy. <laughs> yes. Anyway, I feel like we should probably get on to episode two. We episode have, two. Have... Episode two. Uh... Last time on Lucha Underground. Basically, here's a recap for you folks who are just tuning in. Oh, shit. You guys watched the uh, second episode? Yes. Yeah. Why the yeah. fuck? Oh, my God. Rock Tan, you, you... Rock Tan, you need to communicate. <laughs> you can't just randomly leave and expect to understand the things we're doing. <laughs> anyway, Rock Tan, you're fired again. Yeah, you're fired. Get the fuck out. I feel like Rock Tan can still talk about episode two without having seen it, because well, I feel like we took good enough notes for him to follow. Uh huh. <laughs> you bet. I have shit notes. Jokes on you. Well, I guess I'm fired, guys. Goodbye. Yeah. See you, bitch. Okay. Oh. Anyway, back All right. where we were. <laughs> back where we were. Thanks for coming, Rock Tan. Thanks Your for coming. You be watched. <laughs> we you talked about one match. Congratulations. <laughs> That was a run in at best. Why? I thought he knew. We, like, I legitimately thought he knew we watched two episodes. Rock Dan, I thought we I legitimately you. thought he watched two episodes. <laughs> Security pushed me back into the, the the building. I don't know why they did that. Uh, you probably God have co it, you probably um, have co it. probably have COVID or some shit. I don't know. Uh, God damn it! God damn it, Jonathan Frakes and Groovy just left. Yeah. No, we don't have a bot. All right, so uh, we do a recap of last of, of last episode, and then we get into the ring with uh, where we meet up the free dudes that uh, that Cueto hired. Cortez we Castro, start with Cortez Sis Castro, Cisco, and Big Rick. Oh, Google! Let us, oh, Google! Uh, these are Ricky Reyes, Little Cholo, and Ezekiel Jackson. <laughs> Uh, yep. Ricky Reyes, best known for working in the World Wrestling Council in Puerto Rico. Yes. He also did a stint in uh, Ring of Honor. You know, for he a guy named was... Little Cholo, he's not that little. I mean, he's a little yeah. compared to Big Rick, but Big Rick's big. And he's a Rick. But he's a Rick. <laughs> uh, I'm going to need a while to find Little Cholo. He's probably under, like, Cisco Wrestler. I just looked up Ezekiel Jackson for just to see what it is. He, he, he has if, a wrestling if, academy if, now. If that's his real name, but his birth his birth name, Ricklon Ezekiel Stevens. Rick I think Rick, he's, yeah, Rickland Stevens. I don't think he's from America. Uh, uh, I have he, nothing he on the actually American. Though. He's oh. Guyanese American. Oh, he okay. Yeah. He's Guyanese American. All right. Okay. Oh I wait, no. Did, I did. actually, I guess he is an American. He was born in Guyana. Never mind. He's probably born in Guyana, naturalized citizen. He probably, yeah, he probably moved up here when he was like a young. But still uncomfortably large Ezekiel Jackson. <laughs> yes. Just power bombing third graders as a th <laughs> just I don't know. <laughs> a 
for those who for those who don't recognize him, uh, Big Rick worked in WWE for he started in WWE and worked there for like seven years as Ezekiel Jackson. Most importantly, he was in the core. <laughs> he was uh, in the core. Yeah. The core. <laughs> and the ruthless round table. So he sort of talks about what they are. They're mercs. They're mercenaries. They're mercs. They work for money and they do what they're told. And Dario pays them well to break shit. And Prince Puma and Johnny Mundo come out and they and they brawl. And they brawl with Castro and Cisco. And I Big love Rick that Dario's Cisco. office is just like over there. <laughs> it's it's like, just in yeah. the it's just in the temple. Because he just he opens just... his door and comes out and like, hold on now, we're gonna have a tag team match now, player. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the first things I I I I caught that I caught my attention watching this again that I forgot about. Yeah, his office is right next to the pretty much right next to the ring arena like to the uh, like to the steps and i was like going you know that doesn't seem like the best idea oh no i think like, i think and, later on there is i can't remember what match it was but i think somebody does go through his office window at some point at some point we'll talk about it when it comes up yeah we will we will definitely mark out for that when it comes up so i thought it was going to be two on three it, tag match but it, it, like, it's like Rick. because of the ease of yeah. access that gives to the wrestlers to come complain to him or potentially want yeah. to beat him up. That's what I... I also well, like that it's just an actual location and not just like... Like the fucking, like the fucking shower offices of the WWE. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot when Ric Flair just had a shower office. <laughs> like where it's just like, there's this nebulous area in the arena usually with WWE it's like, where it's their office. No, no, it's like with the fucking, if I recall, it's like with the moving APA door. We're like, yeah. they changed arenas, but they're pretending it's the same building. And I feel like that's fucking stupid. <laughs> But here, because they're in the same arena every week, they can just have an office set put in for the, for, for Dario Cueto to sit in. It looks a lot nicer in the fucking segments, though, because it, it, it's, like, properly lit, and it looks like yeah. it's in a nicer place, but it's actually just a little shitty arena in, a, like a, in, in their little hangar. A little yeah, box next to the it, arena, yeah. Yeah, right away when you look at the arena, it's com a completely different look and vibe. To every other promotion I've seen, it's grimy, dirty, dingy looking. It is it's definitely what WSX wishes it was when they like, were running. It's a smaller. It's it's a lot smaller than most arenas. Yeah, but they had a hot. Seen. It has a hot crowd, which is good. But yeah, it, oh, yeah, because of that, it has like an intimacy and atmosphere to it that it's just unmatched. It does have great atmosphere, even though like. You can kind of tell that they have better cameras for the backstage segments because it's just like, oh, and the obvious downgrade incoming. Uh, <laughs> maybe it's just yeah, because it, it's harder to film live live action like that. I don't know. Yeah, probably. Did you notice like, that yeah, the ref had a broken arm? <laughs> oh, yeah. Referee Rick Knox was working in a cast, which is very weird. So they set up a tag team. I thought it was going to be a handicap, but Rick, Big Rick decides he's had enough of this shit, and he just sits on the top of the stairs, and he's just smoking and looking like a real he's badass. <laughs> oh, he's great. Like, he is, he is so, div like, divorced from the Ezekiel Jackson character where he was just generic, bald, black dude in red It was Trump's like they were trying to find him. the guy who can do what Ahmed Johnson was supposed to do, <laughs> and they couldn't find him. <laughs> They couldn't find him, and but when he jumped over here in his fucking jeans, his black tank top. No, he had a cigars. he had a look. He didn't have the fucking just the red trunks and the. Uh, no, he had fucking. He had like, a look. He, he had jeans. He had a tank top. He was smoking. He 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 had the no tank top when he or Nagi people, but. But otherwise, he looked like a fucking badass. Yeah. Exactly. And now we get this uh, we get this nice opening tag between Prince Puma and Johnny Mundo versus uh, and, Cortez Castro and Cisco. And maybe the closest thing to a Y segment. Cisco backstage told Matt Stryker that his fighting style is prison shower style. <laughs> oh my god. But oh, if he's talking about like Ozzing people, typically that's in like the in the yard. Or like out in the yard yeah. or in the mess hall, not you the showers. Prison yard style, prison 
prison mess hall style, prison shower style. That okay. A lot well, of we're tears. gonna. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say it. That's rape. So that's rape. Cisco specializes in rape. That is. <laughs> That is pretty much what he said. <laughs> and they keep, and they stick onto that. It wasn't like a one-off. They just started talking about what prison shower style means. And I just kept going, it's rape. <laughs> it's rape. just, it's not, that's not, okay. That's not what you wanted to I say. I know a what little bit about prison. Like, I know a little bit about prison. Too. Where, where do you hide the knife when you're showering? <laughs> your ass? Is, <laughs> do you just got a scalpel tucked into your butt cheeks? <laughs> do you think maybe Cisco you stabbing the, cheeks? <laughs> maybe you hide the maybe you hide the knife. Uh, like like you you, you I'm assuming you maybe you have in the soap. Maybe you have to bring your own bar of soap. And like, why would they let you do it. that? <laughs> and you like, and you like, and you like hold the knife against the soap and somehow in such a way that they can't, I just, nobody. I just think he just said uh, like shove the knife awkwardly into the soap. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> wait a minute, how do you get it back out? <laughs> you take yeah. it out of the soap. <laughs> yeah, but it's in it. the soap now. You and got people, no. There's like an uh, there's like a handle awkwardly people, sticking out. Of the people soap. won't notice your knife soap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you hold it by the handle, so the soap is floating over your hand. But it's covered in soap. <laughs> How are you gonna grab it? It's covered in soap. You're in a shower. It's gonna you lather. Hide. How do you grab a knife with slippery soap hands? <laughs> you hide the you hide the knife in a bottle of shampoo, <laughs> <laughs> which is really hard to get out, and now it's covered in shampoo. <laughs> How do you stab someone in the shower? <laughs> you have to go into the shower, which means you have to be naked and get searched to go in the shower. <laughs> Unless you just have a very big gooch. <laughs> you hide it in a towel, which is an even worse place to hide a knife than soap. Oh, yes, my knife towel. <laughs> Hi. Hide it in the hide it hide it in the cheek of your mouth. I don't know. You're stabbing your own face, sure. Oh. <laughs> it's just how do you hide? You have to disassemble a shower head and hide it in there. I just <laughs> prison shower is rape. <laughs> prison shower style is rape. Let's just. I don't. And he didn't. Prison he wasn't shower even... style. Is what happened to David Flair and The Undertaker. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah, uh, about, yeah, moving on. Um, moving on, this is a good match. This is a good tag team match. Matt Stryker's a fucking nerd. <laughs> Matt Stryker is a fucking nerd. He starts talking about Marvel Secret Wars. <laughs> He 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 calls Dar he compares Dario Equator to the Beyonder from Secret Wars, and I'm marking out over here now. He's just like nerd, <laughs> fucking nerd. Hold on, no. I gotta go watch more Tokusatsu. Ah. That's what I Matt Striker is so much different in this in this uh, promotion. Matt Striker does a Matt, WWE. Matt Striker is a a fucking nerd and B fan fucking tastic. <laughs> He, yeah, like, it seemed like over there he was told to be obnoxious and say stupid shit. He does such a good job of, like, I would describe it as he, he tells you not only about the wrestling, he tells you about the wrestler. And I don't think a lot of, like, commentators do that, where the, their job is to get these guys over. Like, yeah, they can wrestle and get themselves over, but... You have to tell them about who they are and what they've done before they got to your company. It can't yeah, just be like WWE where like a 40, like a 35 year old man just phases into existence and he's a WWE superstar. No, he's had a career. <laughs> yeah. That's what I loved about like the Chavo Blue Demon Jr. match, like bringing up the history of like, of the, yeah. the, the, the of both of them and their like, 
their famous families. Their it's like families. Like Stryker and Mondo like, and Stryker Glory. talked about their families, their like their legacies, their careers, like all that shit. Yeah. Like Andy how Blue called Demon the, was in. Was Andy in called the match. It's yeah. Called it's the match. I wish other promotions would do. It's like if you're for for one, that was their first show, and or in general, you it's like this is someone new or or, or this. Uh, to, that you're bringing into your company, give us a history lesson about them. Tell us how and why they got here. You know? uh, the closest thing I could come to that, I would describe as maybe Excalibur. The only problem with Excalibur is he's kind of like a internet, like an internet fan, or like an internet mark or internet smart. So he, he knows kinda, a lot of indie dudes. He knows a lot of indie dudes, and he uses a lot of insider terms. And I sort of feel like it's like. You know, Johnny, what's his face? Isn't going to know what you're talking about, homie. Like I do. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta lead him in on it. I do, but I'm not sure anyone else does. <laughs> like that's really important. Like you gotta make sure you're understandable, but you're not talking down to them. Yeah. WWE just talks down to you. <laughs> oh my god! Remember how how they talked down to the audience during the 999 thing? Oh my god. 999. 999, you fucking morons. Get the network. Yeah, they basically told you you were stupid if you didn't uh, get this on the network. If you didn't buy a pay per view on the network. Oh my god. Yeah, it's it's a fine line, and I feel like not a lot of people can hit it. Or, I mean, like, if you watch the pay per view not on the network. I like Mauro Ronaldo for his bought, ability bought to call. Paper, I like Mauro Ronaldo for the ability to call things really well. But the problem with him is he's a multi-sport commentator, so he doesn't know a lot of specifics about who wrestlers are. Even if he can, like, be excited and call the match really well. Hmm. Some people don't care for the, that he, he seems to go a little bit overboard at times. Also, he got really weird middle. one time and <laughs> mentioned he wanted to fucking one of the MMA fighters and then had to, like, issue a retraction of, like, all right, that was weird. Sorry. <laughs> 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 that was some weird shit. Mamma mia. I don't know why I did that. Why did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Matt Stryker's just doing a very good job. Vampiro... He's he's, he's 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 finding his thing. He he's hit and miss, but he's got a personality, which is good. It doesn't feel actually, like it doesn't feel but, like the typical heel thing of like I'm gonna always side with the heels and say you're wrong. No, no, he's he's got his own thing. He he's got his beef with Conan that he's always bringing. <laughs> he up. fucking hates Conan. <laughs> yeah, I love that about him. Awesome. Yeah. There's a great uh, part is coming Vampiro up in the later man. a lucha legend. He's, uh, yes, dude. He's yeah. He was very popular. <laughs> he was I think very he was big in AAA. Typically the bad guy. Uh, okay, Ooh. I didn't know he wrestled in AAA. I just remember him. In, it might not have been AAA. It might. Uh, no, it was CMLL. Yeah, it was, was. I think it was CMLL, WCW. Uh, back to CMLL. Was he in ECW? I think he was a big draw. I just remember. Uh, no. Okay. Wearing, ACW, like, though, was his place. I, I just remember when I saw him, I think it was WCW. I never knew he was like, Canadian. <laughs> I yeah, also thought, he's Canadian. He always gave me, like, Texas vibes. <laughs> and, nope. and he, he was he was WCW, he was in WCW when he had... Did he all... It Was it his trademark at one of his trademarks? Okay, CMLL, like, like, UWA, uh, some Japan... Actually, a lot of Japan, all Japan... <laughs> Impact, XPW, trip, then AAA, and then WS, then, yeah, yeah, WSX in between some JCW, so and he also just, Lucha Underground. He just pretty much went whatever the fuck you want. All right, yeah. <laughs> but was he uh, was he always known for wearing that like white face paint? Yeah, yeah, that was his for thing. the most part. Yes, he also went as Gene Anderson. <laughs> I don't know Very when. <laughs> anyway. Also, Vampiro's like, theme in WCW kind of kicked ass. <laughs> anyway, this is just a good match that is going on. Uh, double 450s win. Uh, Mundo double 450s win out. 
We get a Mil Muertes hype package. And also, Conan has some things to say to Puma. You stay away from that gringo. <laughs> stay away from that gringo. Vampire. Or no, it'd be fucking Matt Striker. What's the scoop, Puma? <laughs> Yo, what's the scoop? Puma. Uh, we get uh, Son of Havoc and Ivelisse versus Chavo and Sexual Star. Sexual Star. <laughs> Matt Striker drops that he watches talk as Jericho. Fucking nerd. Yeah, because I think... Um... <laughs> I think Sexy Star or Chavo. Chavo did a talk as yeah, Jericho. Yeah, Ch Chavo and him did a talk as Jericho, and he's like, "You should watch that." Yes. Uh, uh, did you guys bring up that Sexy Star is problematic yes. because of a student? Yes. Speaking of, speaking of speaking of ruined careers in wrestling, <laughs> Evil Lee <Evil> versus <laughs> oh, yeah. Sexy Star. In a oops, my career match. <laughs> God. I don't want to shit on Evil East. It just seems like, yeah, she kind of burns the bridges. Her and Sexy Star both really burn some bridges. I wasn't super into this match, but it was solid. Uh, it was Chavo solid. helped Sexy Star get, it, get her win back. Yeah, he hit the frog splash, and then he let her tag in to get the pin. Vampiro goes, like, during the match. Vampiro does, like, a talk about, like, like, these women, they're working hard. They're wanting to prove they're just as good, if not better than the men. And then he goes like, oh, she's hot, brother. She's a hottie, brother. She's fucking hot, dude. <laughs> Damn hero, respecter of women. Respect. <laughs> uh, someone does a rolling liger kick, and the captions mistranslated as rolling rider kick, and I laughed. Rider kick. That was fun. Rolling Jack Ryder kick. Oh, yeah. Matt Stryker does some form of hype up of, like, some history or something. And fucking... And fucking Vampiro goes, Okay, Mr. Wikipedia. It's like, excuse you, Vampiro. He is El Google. I don't think he's El Google. <laughs> uh, fair. But, yeah, yeah, good, solid enough match. Nothing too, nothing too offensive about it. Just kind of... Awkward to look back at in hindsight with two of the participants. Yes. Speaking of awkward, Blue Damon Jr. gets it, has his first encounter with the valet for Mil Mertes, Katrina. Yeah. Do I, uh, shall we consult El Google? I didn't have the th ready. Fuck off. <laughs> El Google! Katrina uh, uh, is formerly from WWE, where she worked as Maxine, where Maxine. she was on the third season of Tough Enough, I believe. Yes, or the third season of NXT, excuse me, which was the all-female season. Mm -hmm. Then she was teamed with, I believe, Johnny Curtis. Yeah, she was paired up with Johnny Curtis as like a ballet, where I guess they were their gimmick was just being weird perverts. It seems like she, she just kind of. It just seems like she kind of stopped after Lucha Underground. Yeah, she's she's yeah she's mostly been uh let's see she she's bit she's in a modeling agency so yes she's probably look so she's probably looking to branch into acting which and is fair. Speaking of not aging well, she licks Blue Demon Junior's face, <laughs> which is not really the thing you do these days. Uh, well, hey, Blue Demon Jr. was wearing a mask, so. <laughs> if if right-wing dipshits went to a Walmart entirely dressed in luchador masks, I would be so amused that I'd, I'd stop being mad at them. <laughs> you told me to bring a mask. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, you know. I, I am L. Brian. <laughs> like, I hate you. I hate you, but... God damn it. <laughs> you know, you, you did you did wear a mask. You wore a fucking mask. <laughs> I wonder, I, I, you know, I want to look up if there, uh, there probably are. I want to see if there's like Lucha style COVID. Uh, like, there probably COVID are. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, Blue Demon Jr. comes up first, I believe. After yeah, they well, put over Prince Moose first. Uh, yeah. 
I think it's him talking with, uh, I think it's Conan talking with Dario again. Right? I, I think it, it might have just, it might have been him talking to Conan again. I think it was just, um... I think it was just um, it was just more like just video packages, just replaying the fact that he was a descendant of Frank Stallone or whatever. <laughs> Frank Stallone. I just checked, and yes, there are our, our COVID, uh, there are Lucha COVID style masks, and there's a lot. They're in coming many varieties. So yeah, out comes Blue Demon Junior. Yes, out comes Blue Demon Jr. for his match against Mil Muertes. The debut of Mil Muertes. Also this known what... as... Damn, that's a big ass. <laughs> oh, yeah, so... <laughs> it's Ricky Banderas. <laughs> so, Ricky Banderas, who was previously uh, El Macias in... Um, Judas Macias, El Macias. Uh... And Judas Macias in TNA. And he is. He's a good. He's a good yeah, worker. What you doing out here with all this ass? Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Hella ass. The sun is still out, my nigga. Isn't it? Hey. Hey. I, had I to, know. I had to bleep that last time. Hey, hey, hey. He did not say it with a hard R. We're fine. Well, I'm not repeating it. Uh. But yes, uh, so he has a weird is, choice in tights, and I've looked at pictures of Ricky Banderas before, and he kind of wear them before. He sticks to like pleather, like pleather or vinyl, or like kind of like the kind of leather esque look. And honestly, it's not bad. But he's wearing these like blue, these like blue pajama y looking, yeah, like, blue and white kind of striped pants that look like pajamas, and. He's got... It makes his ass look gigantic. <laughs> his ass is all up in your face. It's, it's chunky. It's... <laughs> like, it is a huge dumper. It, it's, like, chunky, and it, you can kind of tell it's sort of, like, packed haphazardly into his tights. And it's just... I couldn't stop looking at his fucking ass. <laughs> It was the it was the opposite problem of Sunny Siaki where we where we don't look at Sunny Siaki's well, ass. We, we but don't look like, at Sunny Siaki's ass, but I can't stop looking at fucking Will Murray's ass. Is. <laughs> and it's a great match, but at the same time, goddamn, all that ass. <laughs> We're trying Why? to wrestle, and you're over there trying to make a fucking cake shop. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Are you saying that this butthole cake belongs to Cake Boss? Cake Boss. <laughs> References. Uh, He's fucking tight, man. But this is otherwise a fairly good match. It's a match. solid match, and, like, uh, Mil Mertes moves faster than you think he can. So yeah, he's so surprisingly he's a, he's quick, a, and he can keep up with, like, Blue Demon, who's a bit older, but he's he's very he lucha can still, he, can still, he can still go for as long as they can have him. Yeah. And well, um, so Mel Mervantes was the guy that Derek Cueto was was talking about when he was yeah when yeah that, that he's a thousand deaths yep Chavo where he said yeah a thousand deaths is coming for us all yeah and I don't yeah, think I can working. stop him a thousand deaths yeah. is coming and it's got a big ass <laughs> it's got a big ass <laughs> <laughs> so I hope I hope Ricky Banderas knows that I respect him. <laughs> <laughs> for the amount of work he's put in, but also he's, not, he's great. But switch your tights back, cause goddamn. damn, you got a big ass. <laughs> damn, a thousand, a thousand deaths is coming out of that ass. A thousand <laughs> deaths is coming for us all, and it is double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. Hella ass, <laughs> hella ass. It was my homie, <laughs> and fucking. He just, he just lets out a fart, and everyone dies. No. That's the thousand deaths. <laughs> but uh, volume is not de deadliness. <laughs> it is when it is when you're Bill Muertes and you got that much ass. <laughs> All right, so getting off the topic of Bill Muertes and his ass, uh, he does hit the flatliner to finish after I think Katrina gets involved, right? Uh, I think so, a little bit. Like either like just kind of slaps him or hits him with her shoe. I don't know. <laughs> shoe. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I, I kind of 
got pulled away for a bit near the ending, and I came back and Chavo was killing everyone with a chair. Exactly, yeah. So then Chavo comes out for what he thinks is a save because Mil Muertes goes for the beatdown. Then he starts beating down Chavo. He grabs a chair and he starts fucking chair shotting Blue Demon Jr. He starts just beat, beating up refs, chair shotting like He's other just wrestlers. Just sharing random members of the staff. And unlike Jeff Jarrett, who just whined the whole time and did it, it was just like Chavo's fucking snapped. <laughs> Chavo snapped and he just does not care. He's going to hit you with a chair, hit you with a chair. Sexy Star comes out and it's just like, Chavo, Chavo why? what are you and doing? Like, and it's like, chair. Boom, chair. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. Boom. My favorite version of Chavo. I love it so much. I love fuck everything Chavo Guerrero. <laughs> Chair shots for everybody, buddy Chavo is great. <laughs> and that's the end of episode two. And that is episode two, and we are done. We'll give a let's give our thoughts on this show, on these shows. I'd say good shows, good lucha good, things, good, good lucha things. Just really nothing else to say on that. Really, like not so much that it was like a boring show but it's just like everything worked everything was good everyone was in their place yeah like everything on the show makes sense it like nothing seems out of place yeah so like we don't even really have a why segment as a result besides maybe the prison shower I style you, yeah you i was gonna say my why is either prison shower style or why he why does momentum got all that ass <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, not a you, segment. That's it. Having like a why, like 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 a segment where oh, that my my thought was like instead of having a why segment because I I I thought we'd find it hard to find one is more of like little things that we can question about the show that are, make us go huh <laughs> things that make go wait what <laughs> yeah but even then nothing really stood out as confusing like and that's the that's the hard part of this it's like. My yeah, that makes was, sense. My why is why does Derek look at the offense right next to the ring? Eh, he likes to he likes to watch the action. Up it's close. all it's all the property I have. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, he couldn't afford a separate office because he's having to do this all underground. Lucha underground. What about I will uh, throw in. What about MVP? Uh, MVP we do have, and we don't have really sign of the week because no one brings signs to this show. No, no, no. one brings signs. Not yet, anyway. Uh, MVP, uh, I'm gonna give it to Prince Puma. Yeah, yeah that or Johnny my, Mundo. Either one could world. do for me. I'll go Prince Puma because he's the new character they're trying to get over. Yeah, yeah. John Morrison's yeah. good. He's he's got that parkour shit, and he's kind of got like the break dancing sort of b boy offense that I like him doing that he mm -hmm. suddenly stopped because I guess he just didn't feel like it anymore. Uh, but, you know, Prince Fu went real good. Push Ricochet. <laughs> Push Ricochet. Underrated. Also, don't feed, don't feed John Morris into zombies. Underrated is hard because no one's, like, being underutilized. No, because, like, the closest thing would be Chavo, but Chavo got, like, Chavo got the final thing of the night. <laughs> last word my, on the second episode my vote was for blue demon just because he's uh, he's like lesser known in the states mainly maybe, and maybe yeah but even then he's still he's still regarded as a legend well, on the we're show. not talking about as a legend on the show actually yeah he is regarded as a legend on the show he they did kind of utilize him and i described this while we were talking last night after we watched it but blue demon jr did the perfect thing of like he beat Chavo to establish that he's a very good wrestler and a lucha legend, and then Mil Muertes fucking killed him. <laughs> and like no one's being misused, is the Which thing. got Mil Muertes over, and then Chavo snapped, which sort of negates the loss he had, because now he's not holding back. He's he's just like, fuck now this, he's fuck angry. you. He's angry. So he might not That's lose me. again, because, you know, he lost the first time, because he was just trying to be like, hey, I'm... Chavo, and not just be like, I'm gonna fucking win, and I'm gonna hit you with a chair, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> yeah. So the best thing I can say is there's no underrated, which is I don't yeah. know if that's a bad. That's good. Like that means that booking is right. 
<laughs> you you selected auto push on your fucking card and everyone was in the correct position. <laughs> However, we do have a comeback for something that we haven't done in a while because I'm going to do this. Welcome to the 2010s alert. Oh, 2010s alert. As they, 2010s alert as they brought up both Game of Thrones and Guardians of the Galaxy, which had just come out re like a few months before this. Yeah, oh, go, go play some blue. Quote. Go play some blue Swede. Yeah, or whatever the fucking. I think there might have been a cover of them. No, it was blue, it was blue Swede. Oh, okay. Well, blue Swede's version is a cover of another song, but I feel like the blue Swede version is better. I, I feel like if that's <laughs> the Todd, I don't give a shit about your like fucking if, old ass fifties music. I feel like if that's the version people recognize the most, that's the version that everyone just kind of talks about. It yeah. sort of overtook the original. One of the things right. I wanted to uh, mention is how all the hype packages and I think there's a trope it. called like covered up. Yeah, covered up. Yeah. Well, I wanted to mention how all of the hype packages and backstage segments are shot in a very movie-like quality. Yeah, it's because it's Robert Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah, that's where that's where you get uh, really see Robert Rodriguez also on the product. It's kind of the opposite of. Um, I assume this is very highly scripted, but it's scripted with a director, and it's not just like, say these lines or you're going to not get pushed. It's like, yeah. It's just like, all right, we got lighting, we got a set, say, uh, you know, this is your line, say that, we'll yeah. do a couple takes to make sure it's good, you know, instead of just like, all right, Kalisto, you got to say all this shit, and if you fuck up... <laughs> Then, please so cut this promo in a language please, so you, cut this you're promo. just learned. <laughs> cut this promo despite the fact that you have a loose grasp on English. <laughs> Go! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> a good uh, uh, lucha thing. And God then he just, damn it! And then he just runs off all going, God damn it! Woo! <laughs> so I think it's different than WWE because WWE is also scripted, but it feels like... It just feels like they just... Or sink or swim with them of just like you better fucking nail it. <laughs> Except with a few people that they they trust to actually, yeah, a few people they trust to allow them to cut promos uh, without without any interference. So here's a hard question. Yes, is this better? I'm not saying better uh, than WWE. Would you prefer this, like kind of like a? serialized semi-cinematic kind of show or would you rather just kind of have the wild west kind of wrestling show where anyone can say whatever the fuck they want and like wow. we'll give you some bullet points but you just kind of talk around them and you know you you're you're in charge of your own character for the most most part i feel yeah. like it's depending on who's in charge because i think having like the writing team that they have like krista joseph does really good work here but also the direction of like robert rodriguez or just people associated with him really helps this so it it kind of depends on the quality of like if you'd rather have a scripted show if the script is good <laughs> yes if if you have the writers to pull off a scripted show if not like just fuck wing it, it. go and wing <laughs> it i think it i think it works for this show because it's trying to bring you know, it's and don't and don't half ass movie. it. You have to pick like either. You have to pick either like, all right, this is is this is some real shit of just like anything goes, or this scripted stuff. Because if you kind of half ass it, you end up with WWE. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, what I was gonna say is that I think it works for this promotion specifically because a lot of the wrestlers are are more. No whatever promos they're doing they're doing in like you know in in his in 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 spanish like more likely or just you know they're they have a so, guy who can write subtitles <laughs> they have subtitles yeah yeah i, yeah, I get I, I guess i'm just more thinking of like i guess these guys aren't really these guys probably don't do a lot of promos in in their in triple a i guess Maybe they I might. Probably. We don't watch enough AAA to know that. The only thing I remember about AAA is it's plagued with production issues. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is the opposite of this, which is good production, 
like all around. Speaking, of, speaking of which, I, I found that weird when they when he, when Dario Aquato came out and the AAA audience booed him, and I was like, there oh. has to be some history there that they know they know. He's him probably like a heel manager, because like yeah. uh, the actor is just sort of like a. A he's guy. sort of he's sort of just like a guy you can pick up to play a dude whenever you for commission. He, he was in an episode of Always Sunny. Yeah. But uh I think it's also something that was explained by Vampiro is um is that Dario Cueto is Span- is a Spaniard, not Mexican. Oh. So the and spooky Mexico Spanish Spain. guitar makes more sense. Yeah, Mexico and Spain do not have good history together. It's what with the whole conquist it's because they invaded Mexico. <laughs> yeah. You know, that problem. Cortez the Conqueror or Cortez the Killer, which is also yeah. a song by uh, fucking Neil Young. Uh, I listened to that. It goes for like five minutes before the lyrics start. <laughs> I'm Neil Young. Uh, okay. We're, we're getting that off track. That was our Neil Young impression. Yeah. Our Neil Young impression of the week. But yeah, so... so... <laughs> He has heel heat because it's like, oh, he's a fucking Spaniard. Boo. Well, I think it's a, he's a Spaniard, and also he's a rich piece of shit with, like, no morals. <laughs> trying to buy all of our AAA luchadors. And he's trying to buy our honor away. Like, our honorable luchadors. He's just going to give his dirty money to them. Yeah. Even though it kind of ended up with this kind of badass, like, company because of it. Oh, yeah. Azteca Underground, baby. <laughs> he's coming back. Azteca Underground. I hope, oh, Robert, we're I hope they got Robert Rodriguez back because it'll only Here's work with him. Fingers, fingers crossed. Free. Something Chris Joseph comes back for writing because yeah. he's good. He's pretty good. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so I think that should wrap it up, right? Yes, we are on Spotify and anywhere you can get a podcast. We've got a Twitter, at Boys. Like four people follow us. <laughs> One of which is just incredible. Thanks, just incredible. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> Uh, you can find us wrestleboyspod.wordpress.com. That's our website. We got our show on there. We got wrestle booking. <laughs> Ali Wolf will eventually get off his ass and do a top ten list. Oh uh, yeah, probably top ten wrestling asses with number one being. <laughs> are, are we going by niceness or volume? Because those are two different lists. <laughs> oh man. Because if we're going the by nicest volume, asses and the biggest asses, like five biggest asses and five nicest asses. So oh it'd be like God. Yokozuna over Kishi. <laughs> Mil Muerte. Mil Muerte. <laughs> and then like Sunny Kiss, Brad Maddox. <laughs> none we can't the, escape. Talk about. You know what's the thing I learned about Rass Boys? We, we can't, can't escape, escape ass. ass. <laughs> it's everywhere, man. It's everywhere. Ass. Even fucking ass all the time. Everywhere's ass. All right. If I if we had merch, I want like a stylized picture of Rikishi's butt, and then underneath it is "We Can't Escape." <laughs> now I'm reminded of the of the episode that a C show we did where where I think Mega Fighter was admiring Brad. Uh, I think it was Brad Maddox who was admiring his ass, and then we were like, "No, that was on Dark Match where I told people to talk about Brad Maddox's ass. Talk oh, about his oh, ass." someone's ass and then we started making fun of you and basically saying are you sure are you sure you don't have something to tell us we were basically oh yeah the whole oh Angel i'm not gay i'm just miserably burn. lonely i'm not gay i'm just miserably lonely yes we were, we were we were trying to coax out of you that you might be you might secretly be gay and, and i'm not i'm just alone he likes anyway oh, okay <laughs> Anyway, don't you fucking dare think shame me on the fucking <laughs> Rassle Boys, you It's only fair. <laughs> I don't kick shame you on Rassle Boys, motherfucker. Anyway, <laughs> what, do, what the hell do we end this on? Uh, El Google. Uh, you guessed it. Frank Stallone. Ass. Ass. <laughs>